Uh, so let's jump straight into Bitcoin. Well, we've just had a daily close on Bitcoin. Uh, and a lot of people, and excuse the messy chart here, I'm, I'm about to make a point about it in a second, there's these red lines, very, very messy, I don't expect you guys to look at that for a while, uh, but but what I'm seeing for Bitcoin right now, um, well, you know, I copped a bit of a bit of crap yesterday for for still being bearish on Bitcoin and still sticking by my prediction, but I, I'm used to that, I don't care, uh, but, but the reason being is because people like to think this is bullish, and I would say that, yeah, look, it is bullish, you can't say a move up you know, from 33k to 43k is bearish, or 34k, actually, it's not bearish, you know, not at all, it's it's definitely a good step in the right direction, the reason why I am still bearish on Bitcoin is because my, 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 uh, you know, my needs haven't been met with it yet, you know, I I don't think it's in a bullish continuation zone, I've always said, even when we were down here at 33k, that Bitcoin needs to get above 48k to be bullish, And, and why, well, we'll look into that in a second, but I mean, I'm not going to jump and switch my prediction every two seconds just because Bitcoin's moved up 20% or 30%. You know, um, I don't think that's a logical thing to do. Uh, I'm going to stick by what I said because what I said is the objective reality of the situation. And I know that any prediction that I make now, any prediction that I change based on what Bitcoin's doing uh, is actually me just flipping my bias, flipping my opinion um, based on, you know, new price action, which is not a good thing to do. You know, I'm trying to remain objective in this market. And, And why do I think Bitcoin looks bad? Okay, well, the first thing I want to say before I even say anything about that is uh, kind of diagonal lines. Now, you, you'll notice here on this chart, I have like, you know, six, seven, maybe eight diagonal lines here uh, on this chart. And these are all red lines and they're all cutting through price action. It makes a very, very messy, messy, choppy uh, price action here. And very, very hard to determine what's actually going on when you have this many diagonal lines. Now, the point I want to make is that Diagonal lines are not something you should be relying on too much for Bitcoin. Now, a lot of people would have been pointing out uh, in this in this rally uh, the diagonal bro- line break for Bitcoin, how that's affected the market, and how Bitcoin's breaking up because it's broken that downtrending line. Well, this is a good example of you know all of these lines are tested, they're confirmed, they're very strong, but they just get moved through so easily by price action. We can see that occasionally they act as resistance and support. Uh, and, and, you know, if you wanted to be very technical, if you wanted to be very micromanagement with your investments, micromanaging with your investments, you know, you would have all of these lines up because look, resistance, uh, sorry, support resistance, resistance, you know, support, these act as resistance and support at every two seconds. But the point is, when you look at lines like this, you realize that, hey, yeah, they do act as resistance and support every two seconds, but they're also overcomplicating the main situation. So using that, what we can do is we can cut this down to just a few critical lines. And what I'm seeing as the few critical lines for Bitcoin is, um, let me just scroll back here. This one is obviously a critical line of downside. However, it's way too far away to even talk about it. Let's delete that one. This one is the critical breaker. We've already broke down below that line. So it's irrelevant now. We're never going to test that again. We'll delete that one. Uh, and this one's pretty relevant in my opinion. This one's pretty relevant. These are the critical lines, lines that I'm seeing for Bitcoin in terms of diagonal lines. We can really simplify this down to the critical levels. And you'll notice that a couple of the lines that I just deleted, there's no chance of us ever testing it again. One of the lines we deleted was literally down here at like 31K and it was heading downwards like 500 per day. We're just not going to test that again. So it's irrelevant. We don't need it on the chart anymore. It's simply overcomplicating things. And so the point I'm trying to make is horizontal resistance and support is way more important than uh, than diagonal resistance and support. Uh, And so when when we take that in consideration, as I said, we can simplify these lines down. Now we have resistance here uh, from this diagonal line, this red diagonal line that is acting in conjunction with the resistance we have at 45.5k. 45.5k is a very, very major level. Um, 45.5k is basically what was holding us up and I'll circle it for you guys because you can see it was holding us up here uh, in December, right? It was the kind of the whole thing here uh, where everyone said we're going to see a double bottom formation. I said, no, we're not going to see that. Uh, that was the, the bottom of the region. That was where the double bottom was meant to happen. We dropped, we dropped below that, we lost it and we dropped down straight to 33k. So 45k, 0.5k is very, very important. Some would say it's 46. I'd say it's 45.5 because that's where the wicks land. Um, and then above that, we've got uh, 48k, right? 48k is, is the critical level. It's the most important resistance we need to be conquering uh, in this whole market. And then if you want it to be ultra, ultra, ultra conservative, I wouldn't really recommend doing this. But you know, if you did, if you just like have zero risk tolerance, I'd be waiting for 53k because above 53k is typically where we see uh, you know the the all time highs take place. It's kind of that region in which we have here like the peak above 53, the peak above 53. That's pretty clear, like in a, in a, on a macro scale or on a larger scale, I should say. Uh, you know, that's that's where you need to be buying back, you know, fully if you haven't already done so. But 48K is where I would be buying back. Now, 
you know, 48 k is, is a very long way away. It may look may look like it's not too far away. I would I would strongly disagree with that. Uh, and the reason being is because, well, you know, when you look at it from from this perspective, you just take away everything, right? Yeah, it's very close. 48 k is only like you know 10 15 percent above us. But when you look at it like this, it's like okay, well, it's a little bit more of a challenge. And then you start bringing up the resistance, and you're like, okay, well, uh, we've, well, the POC is actually at 47. Okay, so that's a very very major area of resistance. And then the bull market support band's actually below 48k right now, and that's starting at 47. So that's pretty major as well. And then you look at things like the 200 and and the 50 day, and it's like, well, we flipped the 50 day. Right? That's a very good sign in the right direction. I'm not denying that, but we've got the 200 above here, just above 48. And then of also on top of that, Ikimoku cloud, we've actually rejected off in this last daily candle close. We wicked up to it, we rejected off of it. So, you know, am I saying uh, that hey, we're not going to be able to break through these things? No, not at all, you know, and I, I completely acknowledge the fact that there is the chance. I would say it's an unlikely chance, but I completely acknowledge the fact that it is the chance that, hey, we could be breaking above 48K and we could, in fact, be entering a bull market. But then from that point, you have to ask the question, well, just because the technicals look good, it doesn't, look the, doesn't mean the macro looks good. And when you're looking at things like the stock market uh, at the S&P 500, and you're looking at things like the NASDAQ, you're looking at things like interest rates, you're looking at things like the DXY, which we'll, we'll look at all in this live stream here, you know, you start to realize that, hey, maybe there's more to the story than 48K. Maybe the global economic situation, which relates to the financial markets, actually looks pretty abysmal right now. And maybe it's not the right time to be buying a, a very, very high risk asset. You know, it's just a suggestion. I'm not trying to be um, obnoxious about it. I'm just saying, you know, potentially it might be a good time to wait until uh, mid-March to see what happens with those interest rates. I don't know, but you know, trading's fine, uh, but in terms of long-term investing, this is not a, not a time in the market, uh, you know, price action and macro alike, that I'd be willing to buy a, long, a long-term investment in Bitcoin. But, you know, looking at TA itself, you know, aside from all of this macro speculation, because that's what it is, it's speculation. I can't be certain about what's going to happen in the macro environment. It's just, it's way too big a picture to deal with. You know, I'm, I'm not necessarily a stock market investor anymore. Uh, and, and even when I was, I traded individual stocks. I didn't trade these major, major, you know, uh, you know, portfolios of S&P 500, NASDAQ, you know, it's not my forte because you need uh, extensive knowledge of the macro situation to understand that. And I, I don't think I have that extension knowledge. I think I'm pretty educated on it, but, um, you know, and, and that's why I'm saying it's speculation, but it's speculation that is worth considering when you're managing risk in a portfolio. Um, and, and, and well, technical analysis. Well, let me get into this quickly. And what we have with technical analysis here is the first and foremost, and the first thing you should be looking at in every single technical analysis ever, aside from resistance and support, which we've drawn out here, is the volume. The volume, in my opinion, is literally one of the most important things you can ever look at because it is the most accurate thing you can look at. Every time the volume does something, it ends up resulting in something in the charts, right? And that sounds a bit vague, but I'll explain it to you a little bit further. When the volume is heading downwards in an upwards trend like it's doing now, since 33K, right? So we started this upwards trend, this small upwards trend in, uh, in 23rd of January, okay? We had relatively high volume, okay? Uh, when the volume is heading downwards in an upwards trend like it's been doing since the 23rd of January, right? It's the 8th of February right now. It's been heading downwards, right? The price has been heading upwards and the volume has been heading downwards. So when this happens, this means that the trend is weakening, okay? And it may not look like the trend is weakening, uh, and I can understand that point of view, right? And there's multiple reasons for that. There's explanations for that. But the trend in terms of technical analysis, whether it's actually going up or not, is weakening, which means the buying pressure is slowing down. Now, this doesn't mean the price needs to stop going up, okay? When the buying pressure is slowing down, it doesn't mean the price needs to stop going up because the selling pressure could also be slowing down. But the point is, generally, what you generally see in a market, and I don't go against the TA, this is a fact-based channel. I'm not speculating that, hey, well, maybe this time it's different. No, this is technical analysis. This is, this is the objective reality of the situation. The volume's heading down, the price is heading up, it means the trend is weak. It means that I'm not going to be confident to buy into this trend, okay? And it's still, until I see the volume start wicking upwards consistently and building and the price going upwards, I'm not going to think this trend is strong. Sorry, that's just what it is, right? And then when you take into account as well, well, not only do we have descending volume and upwards trend, which some people would like to just look past, and you know, you could do that if the fund, if the other technical analysis was good enough, you could do that. But on top of that, stochastic RSI has topped out, okay? The last four times we've seen that on Bitcoin, I know stochastic RSI is very um, hit or miss, but I mean, we, where did we see that last of Bitcoin? Well, we saw it here, all right? Bitcoin dropped. We saw it uh, over here, okay? Bitcoin dropped. We saw it over here, Okay, Bitcoin dropped, and we're seeing it again. So what does that mean for Bitcoin? Well, I mean, if we're following the trend, if we're following technical analysis in an objective kind of standpoint, it means Bitcoin's going to drop. 
Okay. And then we look at something like the MACD and it's like, well, you know, MACD looks good. It's trading upwards, but the point is the majority of the move or of the bullish move is already over according to the MACD. We look at RSI. RSI is reset past it at neutral levels. It's actually in uh, more oversold levels right now. It's not completely oversold yet. There's still move to, uh, room to move to the upside on RSI, but we've broken out of the RSI downtrend. We've gone from 33K to 44K. You know, that's a move of around, well, let's see, that's a move of around, you know, 35%. Um, and, and you start to wonder, well, why are people buying right now after a 35% move in, in just a matter of two weeks? Because it's FOMO, it's greed, right? It, it's, it's fear of missing out. And the point is that, all of the indicators that previously would have said we're going to break out have already played out. Uh, and right now we're kind of, we're riding the wave. Uh, and the wave can only go on for so long. It's going to crash into the shore eventually. Um, and, and that's not to say that, hey, well, it's going to drop back down to 33K, but it's at least to say, it's at least to say that we could come down, we could retest 40K, okay? We could do something like that. And, and even in that scenario, I would argue that that's more bullish than just going up more. Right, because if we come down and we retest 40k, at least we have an opportunity to do something like this an inverted head and shoulders pattern. You know, at least something like that, where an actual bullish structure is being formed, would form. At least we'll have, I don't know, maybe a glimpse of uh, bullish divergence or something. You know, we need something right now because right now Bitcoin is riding a wave and the wave is not very strong. It's weakening by every move. The only reason that Bitcoin is still moving upwards, in my personal opinion, is the fact that we've had multiple news events during this time. Okay, we've had. Uh, an ETF being released, uh, a Valkyrie ETF, right, being approved or something like that. Sorry, there's a fly here. Uh, Valkyrie, it just on my microphone. Uh, a Valkyrie ETF being approved, and that's what led to the pump above 43k or, or, or to 44k, you could say. And then back here uh, on this large candle from around uh, 37 to around 41, we saw actually um, the the job report in the US come out and like 400,000 new jobs or something, whatever that's supposed to mean, right? I don't even know what that means. Uh, I don't think it's that bullish at all. I think it's just a bit like a bit of hopium. Uh, but, <laughs> but that happened and, and the price pumped up because of it. But like, why? Who knows? Uh, you know, and, and, you know, that's good to see as well. But the point is both of these things are news events and they're not sustained rallies. They're not reasonings for sustained momentum. And you could say, well, the fundamentals are better now and that means the price is going to go up eventually. It's like, yeah, like kind of, but not really. People don't invest big, you know, people aren't trading Bitcoin right now because of fundamentals. And, you, you know, you could say they are, but that's not really how it works. A very volatile asset is going to move volatilely, or I don't know what the word, with volatility, uh, regardless of what the fundamentals are. Um, you know, if you're talking five years from now, you know, it might see sustained growth from fundamental growth. And, you know, fundamental growth is happening over a long period of time, but to pin it down to like this week and be like, well, now that this week's been good in the fundamentals, it means that we're going to be good forever in technicals. You know, I, I know that's not exactly what people are saying, but it sounds a bit like that. Um, and, and it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, um, you know, it's a bit of a dumb argument to make, in my opinion. I think that a volatile asset is always going to be volatile until it's not, right? Um, and that's obviously, that's a slow process and the fundamentals have to build over time for it to be less volatile. Um, but but for it's, for us to say, well, two events that like vaguely affect Bitcoin have happened in the past week and therefore it needs to go to 100K, doesn't really make sense. The point is, the point is what I'm trying to make and I've kind of played it out, you know, uh, laid it out pretty carefully here is that I don't think Bitcoin looks very strong in this rally. Um, and I'm going to stick by what I said, you know, obviously it looks better than it did 33 K, you know, I'm not stupid. Um, you know, uh, but like I've predicted this rally, if you haven't watched my channel, I started warning people about this at 66 K or 65 K. Actually, if we bring it down to this wick here, it's actually 66 K. Yeah. So I started warning people here. I noticed that, Hey, this looks terrible. We started seeing bearish divergence. I literally started warning people. I didn't say, I didn't say it was a bear market. I'm not claiming that. I said, it doesn't look good. I would be selling out of altcoins here. Okay, and then when we dropped down here to 60k, and during this drop at 63k, I was like, all right, no, this actually really doesn't look good. We shouldn't be doing this this late into the cycle. And I said, guys, get out of old coins. You know, this I'm out of old coins. I was out of the market by 63k, and then down here at 58k, 57k, and this is where I released a video on Twitter this morning. Uh, I said, guys, bear market confirmed. You know, it's over. Um, and people didn't believe me. People trashed me, uh, and I stuck by that prediction you know, regardless of what happened, and we end up at 33k, all right, so I'm not trying to, like, boast here, but what I'm saying is, you know, if all of this happened up here, and I was all bearish up here, why would I be bullish at 43k, you know, on a personal level, there's no reason, if I get back up to 48k, which is my invalidation point, we break 48k, consolidate a little bit, because remember, it's not just about breaking, it's about actually flipping it for support, and then start heading upwards, I'll buy back in, and then I've still actually bought back in, you know, 15k cheaper than I sold, so, like, 
for people to say that I should be bullish right now, it's just, it's ridiculous to me. It's like, especially when there's no technical strength and especially in the macro environment, I just really don't see a reason to be bullish. But going into a few more things and then we'll get into some questions here. Like this chart here, and I want, I want you guys to not forget because you know at the end of the day, I need to advertise my channel, right? And I'm not just trying to tell you what I've done, but like, I want you guys to not forget that you would have seen this chart before. I had a, a green scenario and I had a red scenario, that, uh, sorry, a re yellow scenario and an orange scenario. I don't know where I got those colors from. Uh, and the yellow scenario is we could keep, keep doing this, but train is your friend until it ends, right? That was kind of a less favored scenario, but it was possible. And the orange scenario was we do a breakout. Now, I haven't touched this chart since the breakout. And, you know, this was, I was this, this is what I was expecting. You know, this is what a vague guideline of what the breakout would look like. And we're following that right now. And, you know, I think we're going to come up to 45.5K. I think we're going to reject off of it. Uh, and I think ultimately there's a, there's a solid chance that we could be testing 48. Now, I don't think it has to happen. Uh, and especially given the weakness in this rally, I think, you know, it certainly doesn't have to happen, but I think there's a solid chance of it. And then March 15th, which is when this Federal Reserve talk was going on, I think we will see a correction across the tra traditional markets. And I don't think the arrow is going to look like this, by the way. But the point is, the trend is downwards. I don't think the arrow is going to look straight down like this. Um, and I think that the bottom will be coming in between April and November. Uh, and I think I would lean toward, more towards the fact that November would be the bottom now, uh, now that we've broken this downwards trend. And that is based off many, many things that I'll look at later in this video. Um, so the point is, you know, even this dead cat bounce move that everyone's telling me I need to be bullish about, you know, I predict, I predicted this, you know, in advance, I predict this way up here, you know, d December, you know, I, I wouldn't say I predicted it directly, but it was a scenario that I very clearly outlined. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I know what's going to happen here. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying certain cause I'm not a genius. All right? I'm not, I'm not a, a crystal ball, but you know, the point is I've, I've foreseen this. I, you know, this still looks bearish to me until we break 48 K and, and as per the scenario, it still looks bearish. So I'm not going to be flipping back bullish. No, not until my prediction is invalidated and it's not invalidated yet. Um, we'll jump into some comments in a second here. Uh, I want to look at one more chart. Uh, and this is a chart, actually, maybe we'll bring this up later in the video, because this is a very interesting chart, I really uh, do like looking at this chart, um, you know what, screw it, we'll just, we'll just jump into it right now, you know, I think we might do a bit of a shorter live stream today, so uh, don't worry, your questions will get answered if you're answering, if you're putting them in the chat right now, we'll go for a big segment where we answer all the questions, but this is an interesting chart, right, uh, and I want to look at this quite extensively here, uh, forget this logarithmic scale for a second, um, I just want to show you where this is from, so this is from the region here in 2018, um, in 2018, we had a drop from the bull market high, all right, it was at about 20k, uh, and, and essentially we dropped down, uh, and then we had a dead cap bounce formation, and this is taken from the dead cap bounce formation, okay, uh, so it's, it's actually, you know, it's not just a random fractal that I pulled out of a, you know, Apple stock in 1998, this is from Bitcoin four years ago, in a very similar place in the market than it was then, applied to now, so what does that look like, what does that look like, well, it looks like this, uh, and this is why I like it, okay? Look at these similarities. All the way from September, you know, basically a, a carbon copy, you know, all the way from September, a double peak, a drop down in a similar fashion to what we saw, a fake double bottom formation, a drop down further, you know, and then to chop around the bottom and now a lift up, right? A dead cap bounce. And notice this, on top of all of this, that's a striking similarity. You can't even deny it. And then I, I'm not saying it's going to go to 56K, by the way, but on top of all of this, 48k acts as support and resistance. 33k is the same region. 33k and 35k are support throughout this entire drop, and 30k is support as well. It's like striking similarities, and 40k as well, by the way. So, like you know, even the resistance and support lines up. But that's not what this is about. The, the point is the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because well, we'll look at those similarities, and this is kind of a scenario that you could you could argue for the November bottom, which is what I'm kind of predicting at this point. Uh, but you know, not certainly. I think it's too early to tell. But I think November is pretty likely. Um, and that shows you that, hey, the November bottom will be coming in here and it will look something like this, right? It's not going to play out perfectly like this. It very much probably won't even look like this at all. You know, fractals are very, very rough. Uh, I'm not saying this is what it's going to look like at all, but it's, it's a scenario to give you an idea of how long we can actually consolidate. This is what happened in 2018 relative to current price action. We consolidate relative to current price action between 32K and 46K pretty much for literally, you know, eight months. You know, that can happen. Um, you know, Bitcoin doesn't mean that doesn't need to be moving all the time. And I think a lot of people have been kind of surprised by the speed of this drop. It's been very, very quick. We don't usually see that in a bear market. Um, and, and, you know, that's because of the macro situation, in my opinion. Um, but 
you know, the point is, and, and another point I want to bring up is the fact that like, well, this actually tops out coincidentally with, uh, you know, March 15th is actually right here. And if we adjusted it slightly, I'm sure we can make it work perfectly. And that is the Federal Reserve meeting date. And that lines up with the top of this dead cap bounce on the 2018 fractal. So that's interesting to take a note of as well. Like, you know, there are striking similarities in terms of price action and, and in terms of macro events. But let's look at some questions. I think it's pretty